Broadcasting live, it's Cream Pie Sunday. Oh, yeah. And now for your hosts, give it up for Josh and Rick. Oh, yeah. And we're rolling. We're back. We're back in black, baby. Back and better than ever, baby. We we took a little hiatus. We've been off for the last six days. Mm. Um, so we're, we're back and we're, we're good. Yes. AKA, we're just, we're just doing it every Sunday. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. It's been a week. Yeah. Yeah. But we're ready to cream. What, what a week. What a week. Did you, have, did you have yourself a week? Yeah, I had myself quite the little week. This is the, the most filled in I've ever seen your beard. This is uh Well. If, or, or maybe I was just the way you're looking at me. I was like, your, your face looks very yeah. co- contrast. Yeah, it looks like the, it filled in. If that's the looks case, good. it's pretty sad because I am <laughs> patchy as a motherfucker. <laughs> I have the uh, new beard bit I'm doing on stage. It's like, uh, you know, try to grow a beard. It's going a lot like my life. They're both pretty mediocre. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of rough patches and gaps. It's darker than it should be. My uh, dad does it better than me. You know, shit like that. <laughs> yup. Speaking of dads, dude, happy fucking Father's Day, my friend. Happy uh, Father's Day to all the fathers. Yeah, I guess... Uh, yeah, I mean we're like the, we're some of the original cream fathers, so I guess technically we would fall. Yep, the fourth fathers of cream. Couple cream daddies <laughs> over here. Couple cream papas. Did you do anything for your your, your, your old man there, guy? I gave him I uh, gave him a little ring earlier, and I he's like, "Hello." I'm like, "Hey, uh, is this Father Armbrick?" He's like, "Yes." I'm like, "Happy Father's Day, man." I'm just calling to let you know I didn't get you anything. Uh, nothing's on the way. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a call. He's like, "Okay." <laughs> When you said you gave him a little ring, I thought you meant like a ring on his finger. Oh, um, no. <laughs> like I gave him a little ring. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he could wear rings. His fingers are like little sausages. So yeah. like, I don't. They'd have to be a big ass ring. He's like got the, the, ring. the Prince Harry sausage fingers. <laughs> yeah, big fat dude. greasy digits. They're all swollen. It's like uh, you look like you're you're allergic to something. You should change your diet. Your finger shouldn't look like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my old man a uh, $50 gift card to Home Depot. Nice. Yeah. It's easy enough. I just <laughs> emailed it to him. Yeah. Yep. Just want to know that the old man's appreciated. That's pretty much yep. all it is. You know, Mother's Day, I fucking <laughs> sent uh, my mom, fucking, you know, uh, like chocolate. Oh, edible arrangements. You know, it's this whole yep. thing. But I feel like it's more important to treat the ladies. Men never get the fucking <laughs> support. It's always the women's, you know, like men's birthdays. I mean, yeah, they'll do something nice for us, like a dinner or something. But it's always like a big thing for women, you know? Well, I saw something. It was uh, Mother's Day is the second most celebrated holiday after Christmas. Yeah. And uh, and Father's Day is like not even close, dude. No. Like not even, it's not even like, like the top half of holidays. <laughs> it's like after June 19th, Juneteenth and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Trans yeah. Rights Day or something. I don't Tra- know. Trans Rights Day. Trans Trans Rights Month. Mm. I slept in late today, man. We had a late night at the old Loretta's restaurant last night. So, uh, and then we came home and watched Black Mirror, which, dude, have you seen the new season? The new one? No, I I, I haven't got into that yet. <laughs> Baby, you're in for a creamy little delight there. This shit is hot. Dude, it's, it's, it's I great. love that show. That's yeah. uh, yeah. you turned me onto it, and I watched the whole thing with my dad. And a lot of it was like over my dad's head. He's like, "I don't get this." It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. pay attention, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different generation, man. Well, what's yeah. the thing that he's holding to his head there? That's his phone. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, I like a lot of those, but uh, I watched the the Bandersnatch, the one where you mm-hmm. had to select like how the movie plays out, and then if you get it wrong, it just like replays, and then you have to yeah. choose the other option. And yep. Eventually, it just kind of ends. Like, if you're in there for, like, two hours, it's just yeah. like, all right, here's the ending. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, it's kind of lame. Me and Lita did that one night. We, were, we did it for, like, four hours just trying to get to all the different endings and stuff. Apparently, there's only, yeah. like, two or three endings. But, yeah, it's pretty trippy. But And then they kind of fell off Black Mirror with, like, that one season that was just garbage. It was only, like, three episodes, I think. They tried to come back, and then Miley Cyrus was in one of them. Remember that? That was a good episode, though. I like that. I, I like the not. premise of that. I was not that, a fan. That's just, uh, I mean, it's kind of like what's happening now is uh, they're just using AI now instead to, like, make Tupac songs. Dude, there's an like, episode <laughs> about that in the new uh, Black Mirror. I uh, <clears throat> I saw something on YouTube, but it was like, I used AI to make a Metallica song, sing about killer whales, and it's like, 
deep under the sea. And yeah. it's like playing just sea. AI Metallica. Yeah. It's like the weirdest thing, dude. Yeah. Well, it'd be like, see ya. You know, he does <laughs> yeah, that. Dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous. He's the fucking man. I love Metallica, dude. I was a big Metallica fan. They were my favorite band, I think, growing up, you know? I listened to, yeah. uh, what was it, Frantic today off St. Anger when I was Same driving anger. back from Keene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I woke up uh, nice and early. Can, can I go on a little rant real quick? Yeah, dude. Fucking talk to me, baby. Good golly. All right. Let's maybe go. not a rant. I'm not trying to piss anybody off or. Uh, piss people off. It'd be funny. Make people upset. Let's do it. So Fuck all you people. I, I had I Except had a buddy come over yesterday, help me shoot a music video. Mm-hmm. We film. It's like downpouring. We're both like out in the rain. We're at Keene State College. We're filming like in the. Like on main roads, cars are driving by, people are walking by. Like it's it's like very intense. So we do this whole thing, and we're like two thirds of the way through the shoot, and it's just I'm just soaked. And uh, I look at the camera, and he goes, uh, "I'm like, so oh, I think you shot this one. There's something called time warp on the GoPro. Mm, okay, and it makes it so every like that entire clip is ten seconds long. So he would take like <coughs> a a five minute take, but then when he stopped the recording, it would bring it down to ten seconds. Oh no." <laughs> And the problem with that is what it does is it takes one frame per second. So even if I sped it up or slowed it down or whatever, it wouldn't work. So like we're like two thirds of the way through this. And I'm like, dude, like, oh, my can't God, film it that way. So I'm like, all right, well, this kind of sucks. So so we filmed the rest of it, like in the right setup, just so we can get comfortable with it. We go back today and we weren't supposed to film today. We had to make up for it because yesterday was fucked up. Yep. And uh, we're like halfway through filming. And then he goes like, yo, what's this? Uh. What did he call it? Slow-mo. Like, is it okay if it's in slow-mo? I'm like, what? And I look at it. I'm like, no, you you filmed in, in slow-mo. Oh. So like all the clips up until that point today, were fil- they weren't filmed in time warp. They were filmed in slow-mo. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe I'll be able to fix it. He's like, well, we can start over. I'm like, I'm not doing this a third time, dude. <laughs> and then uh, I, I give it back to him. And then uh, he's changing like, because there's like different, uh, like Super View is like mm-hmm. super wide angle. There's like linear, which is like a little bit more zoomed in. Yeah. He's like cycling through these. And he's like, well, does this look good? I'm like, have you been shooting in 60 frames per second as well? Oh, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> 1080p, 30 <clears throat> frames per second, no slow mo, no time warp. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you. Come on. Let me Come ask you. Come on. Does this guy like do film? Like, who is this guy? Yeah. So, so we we both went to film school. I'm not mad. I'm I'm just. It was just. It could have gone a little bit smoother. I'm just saying that because he's yeah. he's my guy that helps me do these safety 101, <laughs> 202, and 303. Yep. Because like I have I have you help me make me the song and then I have, have him help me make the video. Right. So that's kind of like the team. Oh, but it's like. Uh, oh, never what? mind. I'm sorry. I I just saw something pop up on this on the computer and it, <laughs> it's all fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's so just, good. OK. It, I got this little error message that said uh, you may be having <laughs> performance issues on the, the video and I'm like, whoa, but then snapped right back and we're still recording. Oh, do you do you want to check it out? It looks like we're still rolling. We're still recording. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah, clown, so, this motherfucker. Yeah. So you went to, he went to film school and everything. He was in my fraternity. Yeah. He yeah. was, uh, he's a film guy. Like he's helped me film. But like the thing was, and I, I, I give him credit for this. So when we went out and filmed last night, we had a monopod and then there was like a little stabilizer on it that would hold the GoPro upside down. And right. That's what we were using. So he, we had to like figure out like a good way to do it. Because I think ultimately, if we had just used the footage I got last night, I wouldn't have been happy with it because mm-hmm. it was a lot of like going way into my face and like a lot of like crazy movements. Whereas if it was slowed down, like more of the image would be usable instead of just like a. <clears throat> yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. But who I knows, remember, man? Uh, Might turn out cool. It's The problem is I want to be the one <laughs> holding the camera. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm tired yeah. of being in front of the camera, dude. I just want to like hold it for other people. Start making videos for other people. I mean, that's where your passion is. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, so that was the shenanigans. So I woke up nice and early and went to Keene State and filmed again today. So that was uh, a good, good way to start my day. I just rolled out of bed like uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Fucking real dirtbag status over here. You know? You know? By the way, Creamers, this is the new official uniform of... Uh, the podcast <laughs> we decided we're gonna match every time you know just a couple of boys you, with the do you have like jumps. a singlet like a wrestling singlet from like high school i do wrestling team yes okay we'll, we'll do, do that, that next. next yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep yep a couple boys with beards and uh long johns 
<laughs> I feel I feel flowy, dude. <clears throat> I, feel I feel good. I feel groovy. <laughs> groovy, groovy, groovy. Yeah, dude. Did so did you watch the uh NBA uh finals at all? Did you indulge? No, I just I just saw Joe Chit or I don't even know how to say his last name. Oh, that the guy. guy that won. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the Serbian guy. Yeah. Um, he's a big motherfucker, huh? He's just uh he didn't want to be there. They, they, when he found out when the parade was like in three days, he's like, Oh, the parades, Oh, it's on Thursday. I'm just trying to go home. He's just trying to go home. Yeah, like with his family, dude, he's like stuck in America. I, I, dude, I, you know, I can empathize with that. He did his job. Yeah. Let the man go home now. It is funny though, because you think like, Oh man, to win the NBA finals and the MVP is going to be so crazy and like such a childhood dream for most people. But for him, it's just literally a job. And now he wants to clock out and fucking go home. You know, it's kind of funny. Well, it's crazy. It's crazy too. Cause uh, when he got drafted, it was during a, a Taco Bell commercial during the NBA draft. Oh yeah. He was just, uh, Oh, and with this pick, the Denver Nuggets select Nikola Jokic or whatever his name is. Yeah. They don't even show we should him. should probably know they how just, to say his name on the podcast. There's like a Crunchwrap Supreme on the TV. Like, <laughs> and as his like number it's rolls funny. up, it's like, man. And now gotta he's like it. two-time NBA MVP. Come on. You gotta love capitalism, baby. Sick. Yeah, dude, here's a fun fact. The, uh, the Nuggets mascot, the guy that puts on the, the, the suit, makes three times more money than the highest paid WNBA player. <laughs> I saw that fact. I'm, I'm wrapping my brain around that, but that's like, uh, that's kind of crazy, dude. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I have the numbers right here. <laughs> uh, $625,000, I think, a year. To, to be the mascot? Yeah. Wow. By the way, that's a good great shape fucking for that, gig. Though. That's a yeah. great gig. I mean, you don't have to be in like basketball player shape. I mean, you got to be able to like fucking do the thing where you waddle around and like move your head. And do, do this with your hand and shit. Is he, uh, is he one of these where you have to like run and jump on a trampoline and then dunk the basketball? Maybe. I don't know what they do. But, dude, how do I become a mascot? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> That's great. That's great. No, that, that just shows like how little money the WNBA makes compared to the NBA. You know? Because well, nobody's sitting in the seats, man. <laughs> yeah. What do, you, yeah. what do you want me to do? What yeah, do you want you, me to <laughs> Ladies, I'm, I'm not going to drive to my local arena yeah. and, and support this. We're I'm all the fan. WNBA fans. Like, you want equal pay? How about fucking watch a game once in a while? <laughs> you know? Like, where's the oh, support from the ladies? Yeah. yeah. I still can't name more than three WNBA players. I'm not even a basketball fan, but, you know, I can't. I, you know what? I can't name more than three WNBA teams. Can you? Uh, the Sparks. The Sparks. Is that one? I don't uh, even know. <laughs> probably. It sounds like it would be, right? The ladies? Is the ladies an NBA team? <laughs> the fucking <laughs> the, the Louisiana ladies. The the Western ladies. <laughs> the Mams. The Karen's. The super Karen's. They all come out with the Karen haircut. That would be, if it was like that, if yeah. it was like WNBA slash WWE, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like they would come out with fun. theme music and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That would be I hilarious. That. I would watch that. Then I'm buying tickets. Yeah. Get, for, oh, for put sure. Put my butt in the seat. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. The Karens. Yeah. The Super Karens. Yeah. That would be dope. Huh. Yeah, dude. Did you ever play any um, basketball games, like video games? I never, I tried 2K like a bunch of times. Um, um, it never, I, I don't know. I sucked at it, but it was never like my thing. NBA Jam is fun. Played that on PS2. Yeah, I played that one back in the day. I, I got that like in college, but uh, the yeah. first, the only, I had NCAA 2003. It was a Syracuse player on the cover. And then uh, I got NBA Live 05 with Dwayne Wade on the cover. And that was like how I really learned like the positions and like, like even playing NFL Street 2. Yeah. That's how I learned the positions for football, even though really? that's not even like accurate positions no. for football. Yeah. I like know. you can't just say like, <clears throat> I don't know, like corn. What was it? It was defensive back. Yeah, defensive back, wide mm -hmm. receiver, running back, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, yeah. quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't there like, what, how many people were on the field for street? Was it like seven versus seven or something? Because yeah, it wasn't it was a full line. Seven. It was like yeah. uh, three linemen or something total. Yeah. You know, no tackles. 
And you have your quarterback playing fucking strong safety. <laughs> you got Brett Favre coming over here ready to light you up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that was um, NFL Street 2, I think it was. I always played like Vinny Testaverde. <clears throat> but, dude, if you were Michael Vick in that game, whew, game over. You know? Or if you unlock uh, Randall Cunningham from the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Speed kills in that game. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> even pick the best players. I would just pick the, the fastest player in each position. Yeah. Like, that's how I did it. Yeah. Except for, like, yeah. Orlando Pace, because he's, like, a 500-pound yeah. brick, and you're not going to move him out of the way. Dude, remember we used to have, like, NFL Street uh, brackets, and we played in my garage back in yep. back in the day, back in the Dizzy. That was fun. And we just drink fucking those uh, rum punches. We'd have, like, five rum punches each just get fucking cocked, just hanging out in the yeah. driveway with barbecue. The rum punch was brutal. Heartburn city, dude. Just fucking juice and grenadine and fucking <laughs> cheap rum. We'd suck those down. With, I, you know, I was trying to cook on a charcoal grill and I didn't know how to do it. So all the food tasted like fucking ethanol. <laughs> 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 fucking woo, baby. Yeah, waking up after a night of doing that, just reeking of grill and, you know. And just liquor and... You know when you go to bed drunk after like a bonfire or a barbecue and you don't shower because you're drunk and you're stupid and you're like, fuck it. And then you wake up and yep. it's still like lingering in your clothes and now your bed smells like a fucking smoke pit. Yep. Ugh, that's the worst. I love barbecues and I love bonfires, but the, the smell after the lingers in your clothes, you know? Yeah, back when I used to do fires up behind my house and uh, it would usually be like, get a little out of hand. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go to just like like you said, just kind of pass out in my bed, and then my room would just smell like smoke for two days. Mm-hmm. Just look at the window open, fad blowing. Yeah, I do miss uh, like just having bonfires with the boys. And just yeah, it's like, great. Nothing the, better than a bonfire, man. Good old times, man. Nothing better than burning wood. Like that's like the most American. Not even American. That's the most human you can get is just burning a piece of wood. Yeah, it's like a man. That's thing. what it's like. Just where it started, man. Yeah, yeah. It's something like primal about it. I don't know why. Like men love. Like fire, you know, it's weird. Like they love grilling, they love fire, they love cooking meat on fire. It's got to be something like in our DNA, you know, that we just yeah. it just goes back to, you know. I mean, even like people that are like so into hunting and like so much of it is like, yeah, you got to be able to fire a gun, but a lot of it's like tracking and appreciating nature and yeah, just being out there and being patient and especially if you have like a little one with you or something, you're trying to like show them how to do it. It's just like a bonding thing. So I don't know, kind of cool. But yeah, dude, burning wood. That's a uh, national pastime for cavemen. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Who do you think the first caveman was to grill a piece of meat? What was that about? Do you think it was by accident? Do you think like uh, lightning like lit the forest on fire and he found like an elk that was burned and like ate it and was like, wow, this is actually kind of fucking good. You know? I don't know, man. It's like when they're figuring this out, like how, why, why would they be like, all right, well, that bush is going to give me diarrhea. That <laughs> yeah. bush will kill me. Yeah. That one I can eat. This one's good if you cut them in half and do this and. <laughs> I feel like, like that wasn't a fun process. No, it, it was a process where a lot of fucking people died. <laughs> <laughs> like it took them thousands of years of just eating random things and be like, oh yeah, my buddy died when he ate that one. Don't do that. You know? <clears throat> and then that happens for generation after generation yep. of like, they see this plant and then yeah. they die. And <laughs> well, it's like the it's people continuous. in like um, South America that basically invented dimethyltryptamine by accident yeah. with ayahuasca. It's just mixing two random plants together. Right. But you would never think to mix those together to create it. It's just through, you know, whatever process of elimination. Just yeah. And then eventually they're like, holy shit, we're tripping balls. <laughs> you know? And they must and have thought like that a, was a religious experience. I mean. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? Well, that's like. Uh, oh, I don't even know the name of the book or whatever. Joe Rogan has talked about it. But um, it was like the book about how. Like God came on the world or something. Yeah. Oh, damn it. The uh, something mushroom, right? The sacred mushroom. Yeah. Something like that. It's about like how they think, um, you know, they basically came up with religion because they were tripping balls. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And then like the similarities between like Christmas, like uh, pagan Christmas traditions and like the mushroom, because the mushroom looks like Santa Claus and reindeers um, flock to the mushroom. Like if you piss and you just ate the mushroom, reindeers will like bump into you and try and eat your piss. Because they're like just naturally att attracted to it. <clears throat> and they used to have to All go right, down chimneys is... and shit. What, you get the fucking strobe light over there? Well, we got some yeah, technical dude, it keeps difficulties. Yeah, turn it on. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. God damn it. 
I just shut it off twice. If it comes on again, I'm going to throw this goddamn fucking microphone <laughs> through the goddamn wall. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would it's be just good. I'm looking at it and just keeps flicking it at me. And it's like, come on, dude. You know, I think the creamers like stuff like this. A little BTS, you know. <clears throat> this is the stuff that I want to take out, but it's too good. No, yeah. It's really, I don't. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sacred mushroom. Indeed. Do you do you read books? Are you one to read books? I went on a book reading rampage a couple of uh, years ago, <clears throat> towards like the end of the COVID thing when I was still in Cali, and yeah. I reread like all the you know like uh, George Orwell and all that stuff. But yeah, H.G. Wells. I'm a big like sci-fi fan, but I read uh, you know 1984, Animal Farm, all the classics, yeah, stuff like that. I reread, um, I was getting into Mark Twain. I reread all the Mark Twain books. I know these are like school reading books, but it's funny because when you have to read them in school, you're not interested in them and you're like, this, yeah. eh, whatever. And then you go back and read them as an adult and you're like, dude, this is actually kind of fucking dope. Like um, <clears throat> Huckleberry Finn, shit like that, you know, and the historical significance of it. It's actually like a really cool book. A lot mm -hmm. of N words in that book, by the way. Yeah. What was, uh, what, To Kill a Mockingbird? Yeah. I remember that. We, we like, watched the movie after we read the book. I think that was in high school. I'm not yeah, sure. yeah. Usually standard, you know, high school. <clears throat> These are, like, the books that they don't want people to read anymore because they're offensive. You know? Yeah, and I saw Captain Underpants is in a, a book ban <laughs> list. It's like... Are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> it's always like, it's always one side, like blaming the other side. Like, oh, they're trying to ban books. They're trying to ban books. Well, first of all, they're not banning anything because you can still get the books. They're just like taking it off the, you know, reading list, required yeah. reading list. That's not a ban, first of all. Second of all, like the conservatives get rid of like the, the you know, the gay books and everything like that. And also there are some creepy books that they should get rid of that are like that you know that yeah but then like the the liberals like want to get rid of like huckleberry finn for example because they use the n-word in it so it's like both sides are doing it like can't you just like revise the book <clears throat> no, no you can't fuck with that are, i'm i'm against that don't don't uh, take the word out you know it's a product of its time just like leave it alone like yeah just put like a little thing in the beginning of the book maybe like hey by the way this was written in the fucking 1800s get over it <laughs> yeah like, but like just put put the date right on front dude <laughs> like this you know when was it written for real i think it was the 1900s because mark twain's not that old <clears throat> but it was about the 1800s you know yeah so different time back then man tom sawyer you know back when you could be like a 10 year old kid and just like leave home for five days and just go on an adventure and nobody says anything <laughs> like, yeah crazy shit yeah, dude, Mark Twain is the man. You know, the, um, his real name is uh, Samuel Clemens. But Mark Twain was his pen name or whatever. But they, it's because um, they think that... So Twain means two, right? So Mark, so he would go to the bar. One of the theories is he would go to the bar and he was a, an alky. And he would look, fucking you suck him down. And uh, every time he would order a, a drink, they would have to mark it on the board. Like for his tab. But every time you would order a drink, they would have to mark Twain. They'd have to mark two because you'd order two drinks. Hmm. So <clears throat> that's one theory, but pretty of cool. how he got his name. Yeah. Huh. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. If it is true. Yeah. Yep. Good old yeah, fashioned I read booze the, bag. Uh, the David Goggins book last year. I read the, um, <clears throat> like yeah. one of the last books from action Bronson. Mm. Uh, I saw that. I read, uh, he came out with a book. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah. He did. Well, it was just, uh, it was just talking about like how he like basically got fit during like COVID. Yeah. And uh, kind of like changed his focus a little bit. I read the, um, it was like the autobiography by Logic. And then uh, he came out with like a, 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 like his own book. It was called Supermarket. So I read that. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, dude, it was just, I feel like I have so much going on. I don't really have the time to just like <laughs> sit and stop and. <laughs> I know. Read a book. Yeah. You know? Audio books are great if you're driving. You know, you can always do that route. Um, I'm somewhat like, I don't know why I've never really gotten into that. Like, I've never listened to an audio book ever. You know, I, the thing is, like, podcasts are so entertaining to listen to. And then the yeah. second, like, you're reading, you're listening to somebody read literature, it's not the same. You know? I have to, like, really <clears> pay <throat> attention when I'm, like, reading or, like, listening to. Yeah. Them. And I don't know. 
I'll do that thing where I'll read like uh, a paragraph and then have to reread it three times. And then I'm just like, all right, yeah. fuck this. I'm out. You know? Yep. Yeah. The last book I think I read. Well, well now right now I'm reading uh, the time traveler's wife. I'm reading it very slowly, but I've been getting through that. And then uh, I read uh Tom Segura's book. I'd rather play alone, please. Or whatever. Yeah. It's a good book. It like goes into like his life and everything. And it's pretty funny. You know, he writes it like, comedically so it's cool yeah talks about his dad yeah. his dad just died his dad died while he was writing the book so he kind of dedicated it to his dad it's like damn mm-hmm. but it's funny because his dad would always come on like the podcast like as a guest or whatever yeah. or like they call him up like uh they call up his dad and he'd be like hey buddy you know i just took a big shit and it's like just going into detail <laughs> and but yeah his dad said to him right before he died he said hey just so you know i know what happens when you die <clears throat> and he was in his deathbed, and Tom's like, what? He's like, the world goes on. And that's what the last thing, you know? Hmm. So yeah, that's kind of sad. <laughs> but he's right. The world goes on, baby. Keep on creaming. Yeah. Keep on. <clears throat> I think I'm like halfway through the, uh, the new Rick Rubin book. But all those are like yeah. five-page chapters. There's like 80 chapters in this book. <laughs> Rick Rubin, he would do it like that. <laughs> he would do it completely different than any other book. It's cool because it's like, all right, well, I, I only have to read two and a half pages and then I read the next one. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? That's really seven pages long. And I'm thinking yeah. about it. It's like, I'm used to reading books that like 30 pages is a chapter, you know? Yeah. Like, what am I? Yes. I, I, God forbid I spend six minutes instead of two minutes reading this. Like, come on, dude. So explain the Rick Rubin book. Is it like uh, stories from like the past or is it just like his philosophy on like being creative or? A lot of it's just like, like one of the last ones I read was just like being present and being in the moment and like looking around you. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's, it's, it's not like necessarily life advice, but it's just kind of like, you know, there's always something going on around you that can like shift your focus. Yeah. Whereas uh, like, like inspiration will come to you at any point. Just like be open to it. Like yeah. don't just sit on your phone and fucking scroll away. Like <laughs> right. look out the yeah. window or yeah. go and put something away or, you know, it's, it's when you go, you know, into your room and you're like, Oh shit, I didn't see this on the floor. And like, it's just like, oh, I could use this as a prop. And then it stems like an idea. And it's just like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just. Uh, they call that the muse. The, like always be open to, to the like muse. It's trying to like expand, you know? expand like your, your vision a little bit. Not That's like cool. actual vision, but like concept too. So it's, it's a cool concept for a book, but I kind of want to see like a Rick Rubin book that goes into detail of like all the stories of him working with like these famous bands and rappers and shit throughout the years. You know, like I want a I, chapter to be about the time that he like was working with Jay-Z in the studio and they were working on like 99 problems, you know, shit like that, where he's like, Hey, I think you should do that acapella, you know, like that would be a cool book. Like him working with like, you know, the beastie boys and you know, shit yeah, like but that. I don't know if that's something like he would necessarily do. Cause he doesn't always like he said himself is he's not really like an audio engineer at all. Like he doesn't understand the tech. He just knows like what sounds yeah. genuine. Right, but it still would be cool. Because there are, I'm like, sure documentaries has... and, like, snippets and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure he would have so many stories, though, you know, about yeah. cool shit like that. Or who, who, yeah. who, what's that band? That band, he was talking about it on Rogan last time he was on Rogan. Uh, fuck. Red Hot Chili Peppers? Well, the Red Hot Chili Peppers he talks about a lot. But he's also yeah. talks about um, when they came up with that uh, line for that song. Um, uh, what the fuck is that band, dude? Uh, the, um... Was it Tom mm. Petty? Was it one like violent pornography? Oh, System of a Down. Yeah, System of a Down. And like they couldn't come up with a line for a song, so they just pulled a random book off the shelf and then like just reread oh. that line. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And like how that came together so perfectly, just like moments like that. You know, that'd be cool to have a book of those stories. So the way I kind of like would like to use the book is read it all the way through so that way I get through all the material and yeah. then just randomly, like if I walk by the table and I see it, pick it up, pick a random page, read that passage because it's like, I, f- I feel like if you do that every single morning, like read a chapter or something, it would just kind of like yeah, tighten your, your day up a little bit. I don't know. So I'm not, yeah. <laughs> I went from like reading chapters to reading like two pages and it kind of <laughs> stunted my reading completely. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's cool, man. Reading books. Yeah, speaking of Rogan, there's a uh, he had RFK on this past week, which you know I'm a big RFK fan. I actually like a lot of what he says, and his voice is tough at first. I mean, I've listened to a lot of his interviews, 
And uh, they've all been taken down. YouTube's taken every single one down. Like him and Theo Vaughn, him and Jordan Peterson. He's been on a bunch of people's podcasts, but, you know, YouTube is just going to wipe him clear of the internet because they don't want him, you know, the, the vaccine misinformation or whatever. But he was on Rogan and he talked about- I don't about, even know what you're talking about, man. Really? Yeah. Robert Kennedy Jr.? He was banned from YouTube? Well, he, he's not technically banned, but every time he goes on a podcast for anybody, they take it down. Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. guess, yeah, because when I saw him on Joe Rogan, it's like, mm-hmm. I guess I've heard the name, but I've never really seen him anywhere else. He's um he's JFK's nephew. Yeah. Yeah, but he's been, a, I knew like, that. he's been in the zeitgeist as a, um, he was an environmental lawyer for a long time, you know? So he's big into the environment and everything. And then he kind of got into vaccines during that process. And so a lot of what he says is against the narrative of like what vaccines are and everything. But (laughs) so for the, he basically tries to explain his position on Rogan. So he talks about vaccines for like a solid hour and just goes into detail, like explaining the situation. But I think the reason he did that was because it's going to be the only platform he can actually talk about that shit on that's not going to get taken down. So he's just trying to like explain where he's coming from. And then there's this uh, scientist called Peter Hotez, who's like a very pro vaccine guy. So now Rogan and uh, Peter Hotez are going back and forth on Twitter like yesterday, trying to get him to debate RFK on Rogan's podcast. Is, is this interesting? I know this is just kind of like, I don't no, know. It's this- cool, man. I mean, it's, it's, t- it's current events, man. I think it's pretty cool. This is the, but this is going to be a big deal. Like, um, he has a real shot of being like the democratic nominee behind Biden. You know, I think he's yeah. pulling a lot of people from like the center to his, you know, side, which is great. Yeah. He's like a Democrat that a lot of Republicans are going to vote for, which is interesting. You know, like no, no Republicans going to vote for Biden. That's for sure. Right. How come at, every time we vote, I feel like you, it's just like the lesser of two evils. Like I'm never in a position where it's like, I really want this person to be present. It's like, well, this guy just sucks less than this person. Yeah. It's always between a douchebag and a turd sandwich. (laughs) That's what it is, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It does suck. But dude, I, I like RFK by the way for YouTube, because this is going to go on YouTube. The vaccines are safe and effective. (laughs) <laughs> you should take every single one, every single jab. You should have five boosters, whatever the doctors say, whatever the scientists listen to the science. Fauci is God. And, uh, you know, Rand they Paul should make like a, a punch card. And like, after you're like fourth vaccine, <laughs> you get the next one free or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, we'll give you help. Hep B as well. We yeah. got that in the, in the toolbox here. <laughs> yeah. Fucking jab me up, baby. Let's go. It is kind of weird that when my dad was a kid, there were three vaccines. And now there's like 78 that you get when you're a baby. Yeah. And I'm also like a big believer in like, that's the reason why like, uh, yeah. people are born with like, like, uh, the amount of people with like down syndrome and like autism has like skyrocketed. Autism is a big one. It's like one out yeah. of every 25 boys is autism now. Yeah. That's well, wild. Then it, and then it's like a lot of people are on the spectrum. You know? Right. So yeah, like, yeah. they're not, there's people that like we went to high school with that. I wouldn't be surprised if they were like. A little yep. bit one way or the other, you know, it's not related to the vaccines. YouTube, it has nothing to do with the vaccines. Oh God, look what I'm doing. <laughs> We're going to get one view on this video, dude. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I say it for YouTube, <laughs> but this is the kind of shit that they talk about on the podcast. You should listen to it. Yeah. Like it's really interesting, but I mean, he can't he, RFK went on uh Twitter live. Um, what do they call it? Teams? No Twitter. Fuck. It's like the streaming thing that they can do like the live streaming apparatus yeah. that Twitter has set up and he talked to Elon Musk and uh, some other people for like two and a half hours like I listened to it live like last week and it's just cool to see like he's not going the route of classic media like CNN is not going to put this guy on like they're they're backing Biden like he's not going to be able to do an interview even on Fox News yeah but it's cool to see him go through the other channels like Twitter Spotify podcast shit like that you know, like Trump, a big reason Trump was successful in 2016 was because he utilized Twitter, you know? But it's just interesting. But then, you know, Elon also had Ron DeSantis on two weeks ago. So it's not like he's supporting one side or the other. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Dude, ideally, if it's DeSantis versus RFK, that would be a pretty good ticket, you know? 
I don't know anything about either of them, but I would. <laughs> I, well, put, sign me up. Sign me up. Somebody needs my vote. Who's gonna Who's gonna buy it from me? Well, dude, it, it's. Would you rather have DeSantis RFK or Trump and Biden again? I can't go through this Biden and Trump crap again, dude. Right. <laughs> Why? Like, can we just move on? Can we just like yeah. close that chapter and move? I don't want to be stuck here for another four fucking years of this. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind an RFK uh, DeSantis ballot. I think those, that's a good match. I, and maybe I'm because I'm a fan of both. I don't know. <clears throat> that's a problem, dude. Cause like, so did Biden say he's running? Like, is he going for reelection? Is that yeah, he announced it a few months ago. He's been uh, campaigning. Fuck. His uh, slogan is uh, hashtag finish the job. <laughs> dude, you know what's going to happen if he gets elected? He can't even finish his sentence, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag finish the sentence. Yeah. Him and Fetterman, dude. What a fucking nightmare. But you know what's going to happen? Right. It's going to be Kamala Harris is going to be president. If that's the case, because he's not going to make it through another term. That's the most democratic thing I've ever heard. That makes sense to me. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. What a joke. What a nightmare. Where's Hillary? Get Hillary in here. Is she alive? I don't even know. Does she exist still? Like- oh, yeah, for sure. She's back in Biden, too. I see her tweeting all the time like a moron. Oh, I don't have Twitter, so yeah. I haven't been on Twitter in a long, long time. What are the Clinton's body count now? How many people have they fucking killed? <laughs> <laughs> you and me, two plus two. <laughs> I'm kidding, YouTube. Hillary Clinton is not responsible for any of the deaths and has no ties to Jeffrey Epstein whatsoever. Well, she didn't pull the trigger, but you know, she was in, she was in the earpiece, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like the Sith Lord. She's like, do it. How many times <laughs> did Bill Clinton fly with Epstein is like 40 times or something crazy. <laughs> and he's like, I just flew with him a few times, you know, like uh, okay, <laughs> 40 times. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Is Jimmy Carter still alive? I think he croaked uh, recently, like uh, within oh, the past few okay. years. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know Jack about him, but I thought he was a pretty cool guy. I liked him. Yeah. Yeah. His policy is genuine. It, like uh, the, the, the economy sucked, I guess, when he was president. It was pretty bad, but he seemed like a genuine guy. I think a lot of people liked him, you know? Yeah. Pretty stand up dude. It'd be nice to have a president that everybody likes again once, you know, like, I don't know, maybe just because I'm aware of politics now, but <clears throat> I guess Obama, Obama had a pretty good. You know, like people were pretty happy with him, even if they would disagree with his policies. You know? Yeah. I don't know. But since then, you know, it's been. But then George Bush, like half the country hated him. Right. So. Clinton, people liked Clinton. You know, like my first experience with politics was we were we were voting for the year 2000. And I don't remember which way or was it what or the other way or whatever. But uh, the rumor around the school was. If you voted for this president, they would kill the youngest <clears throat> child in that family. And I remember literally saying out loud, well, I have a little brother, so I'm going to vote for the other guy. That was my first experience with politics. And that has basically been my understanding of politics ever since. So somebody at your school told you that if a guy's president, they're going to execute the youngest child in every family? That was the rumor at the school, man. So he, <laughs> the, they persuaded. So what? That was the year 2000. I was se- six or seven years old. <clears throat> Imagine if that was real. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. You don't know at that age, man. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty far-fetched. Maybe it was like uh, they were talking about, you know, abortion or something. And then they just turned it into, like, you know what it is? Abortion that's didn't a, exist in the third grade, second well, that's grade. Like, that's like the telephone game, you know? Like, uh, the parents tell the kid, just so you know, this guy is for abortion. And if he's president, then our little son, Timmy, wouldn't exist because we would have aborted him. Which is just the parents saying we would have got flushed him out, you know? But... Then the kid. <laughs> Did you just say flushed him out? Yeah. It's just it's just like a, a, a fucking drain going down the drain. Yeah. And then the kid takes that information, goes to school and says, if this guy's president, my, my little brother Timmy wouldn't exist, so he would kill him. And then you're like, oh, shit. Just a bad telephone game. Makes sense to me. Dude, the telephone game is such bullshit. You ever do that as a kid? Like you sit in a circle and like whisper in the ear and go to the next person and the next person, so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, we used to do that in middle school and it never yeah. would pan out. There'd always be one kid that would fuck it up intentionally and he yeah. just ruin the whole game. That's what I was yeah. going to say. He'd just change it completely. It's like, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> you know, like it's to the end and then it's like, uh, 
Mr. Matthews is a little boner. He goes, what'd you say? And he's like, I don't know. That's what he said. He's like, no, that's what she told me. I'm like, uh-uh, I told you this. It's like, no, no, uh Like doing that as like 20 year olds, that would be fun to do. Like do Mr. That Matthews is a little boner. <laughs> You're a little boner. <laughs> what'd you say? Blame it on everybody before you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. Yo, Sorry. I saw um, the new season of uh, Rick and Morty is on Hulu now. So now I get to finally catch up. Yeah, I I uh, think I I'm finished way behind. it. I finished it. Yeah, since it's, it went on Hulu or like when it first came out. <clears throat> I I uh, a couple of months ago I watched it. No. I think it was when it first came on Hulu. But yeah, good season. Good season. We haven't talked about Rick and Morty on the pod in a few weeks. That was a big topic in the early days. The early days. Yeah, I got a I got like a calendar right in front of me with uh, the Moon Man. So I'm just it reminds me every so often. Dude, I think technically this is our six month uh, anniversary. For the podcast. What, what episode is this? 26? This will be number 26. So this will be halfway through one year. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Pretty crazy. It's that's been pretty six cool. months. Six months of creaming, dude. Nice, dude. Wow. That's, yeah. Uh, that's pretty neat. It's kind of depressing because I feel like we just got started and it's already been half a year. It's like, Yeah, damn. but we also did not take any time off. We had times where, I mean, I was uploading this shit yesterday afternoon yeah. or that came out today. So yeah, there's been some, uh, I've had it done by Tuesday. I've had it done by <laughs> Saturday night, you know, yep. it's- same here, dude. When I was doing like the, I mean, I still do the audio version, but yeah, there were days where I finished it the same day. And then there were days like I was Saturday night, like trying to fucking get it done, you know, but yeah. either way, the creamers have no idea. That's why we do it a week behind. It gives us, a, you know, six days to, yeah. So it's funny. I played one of the, uh, the, uh, no contacts for McHale and, uh, yeah. he's like, dude, you got to like save these somewhere. I'm like, well, we're doing them for a little while, but yeah, it's just the, for the amount of effort that went into it. There was no payoff. You dude, know? it took me like hours. And then by the way, creamers, if you like them, you should have fucking listened to them. They had like five views. <laughs> like, you know, those are hilarious. I think the last one was like episode <clears throat> 17 or something. Yeah. It was, uh, oh shit. I don't remember, but yeah, it was just the no context and, mm-hmm. Those are cool. I like those, but yeah, it's so much like if I were to do that with the video, oh like make an edit like that, do you imagine? that would take me like five hours just to do that video. dude. Yeah. It would, it would take forever. Maybe not that long, but like I would, especially uh, if you do like the, the flip back and forth, like you do with the, the shorts. If you did that yeah. too, on top of it, holy shit. Yeah. It would take those a while. shorts are, uh, the, the bread and butter, man. Those are doing well. <laughs> I've been doing, I've been doing one short every day for the last like three weeks. Yeah. And, uh, some are some are missing, but some are hitting. So yeah, I'm just kind of figuring out like titles, and mm-hmm. I'm still messing around with like the the time it comes out, like six a.m. to ten a.m. to yeah. noon time, to just trying to gauge it, you know. Dude, I I've uh, been doing clips for like comedy and stuff. I didn't get any this week. I uh, did comedy twice this week, so I did my usual Wednesday, but then I did a Thursday spot. <clears throat> I go to the this club in Charlotte. It's called Skylark, by the way. Shout out to Skylark club you know they do open mic uh every third thursday of the month or whatever but then they do like real comedians that are getting paid and stuff so it's like a paid show it's, and so it's like the first time i've performed on like a paid show with like an actual you know uh, so i pull up it's this tiny little club i walk in there's a nintendo 64 set up in the corner there's like this tiny little bar and the stage is like you know this far off the ground and i'm yeah. like what the fuck is this place? I was the first one there. I'm like, this place is a dump. It's next to like this condemned building in a McDonald's. And it's like on this <laughs> sketchy street. <clears throat> I saw a guy, you know, arguing with a stop sign on my way in. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. You know? So I get there and I'm like, fucking hey. So then I sign up uh, number one. So I'm going to go first. And I had done a set la- the night before that that didn't go so well. So I was kind of pumped. Dude, that place filled the fuck up. There were like a hundred people in there by the time I went on stage. So now the fucking heart is racing. Now I'm like, (laughs) God damn, I actually got to come with the fucking bacon. I got to deliver for these people, you know? So I go up there. I fucking crushed. I did well. I did well. I was nervous like a motherfucker. I accidentally ran the light. I went like a a minute over Yeah, because I was just on fire. I feel like I did really well, but. And then, you know, I didn't record it, though. It was too busy in there. I had nowhere to, like, set up to record. But, yeah, there might be. I think they were, like, filming it, like, professionally. There was a guy with, like, a camera in the corner, like, filming everybody. Hmm. But, yeah, there's this guy that went on um, that I do comedy with. His name's Matt Christopher. 
and uh, he's a funny motherfucker. He's got some some good shit. But he crushed. He did like 15 minutes, I think. But yeah, hmm. it was good. It was good. I'll definitely be back. I like the vibe of that place. So when did you start doing stand up? A couple months ago, two months ago, three months ago. Uh, my first day on stage, my first set was April 19th. April 19th. Okay. Yep. So like two months ago. Yep. Basically yeah. two months. Okay. Yep. You like it? Is it fun? Yeah. Are you yeah, learning yeah. a lot about yourself? I don't know. I'm learning what I can say and not say on stage to make people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning about keep- the deepest, darkest corners of my mind. You know, <laughs> another joke about my beard that I did that I got mixed reactions from was, uh, you know, my beard is so bad that I got a cease and desist letter from my mom's pussy. <laughs> what? And, <laughs> but yeah, now, originally the joke was my beard's so bad that um, my dad mistook my face for my mom's pussy and I was too scared to correct him, <laughs> which that, <laughs> I had to change that because I was too far, you know? Yeah. It's a little yeah. too far. That might get pulled off YouTube. <laughs> I've been watching uh, like Dice Clay highlights on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Classic. Dude, that just is uh, his whole like demeanor is just it's, yeah. it's like so captivating, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I was watching uh, like Rodney Dangerfield takes him off for the first time back in like the 70s or the 80s or whatever it was. Yeah. He comes out and he goes, uh, whatever, Little Miss Tuffet sat on her Muffet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. skit. And it's like, I'm watching yeah. this. Like, I know the punchline and it came and it's like, God damn, that is so good, dude. The nursery rhymes, dude, were huge. Yeah. It's so funny because that's just a character. Like, Andrew Clay started doing the Dice Man. So, yeah. like, he's not like that off stage, you know? I mean, he yeah. talks similar because he's, like, from, uh, I think he's from Jersey. But, yeah, the whole Dice Man thing, like, he would be so offensive. He would sell out arenas. Like, <clears throat> He sold an arena like every night for 50 days straight. It was crazy. He was like the biggest comedian yeah. in the world. But yeah, he comes out. He's like, so I got my tongue up this chick's ass. It's like the first thing he says. And everyone's yeah. like <laughs> freaking out. And she's giving me, she's giving me a hard time. I get it. We're at the bank, but you know, <laughs> so just sh- shit like that. But yeah, he's funny, man. He's funny. I saw, I saw something about, uh, it was like an interview for, he was talking about how he got kicked out of the MTV movie awards or something like way yeah. back when. Yeah. And, uh, cause like he, he went up on stage and somebody pissed him off or something. And, uh, he just, he like threw out the material that they like approved. And he, he basically did like the poetry stuff. And, uh, like right after he got off stage, um, uh, the guy was going to like punch him in the face. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And he's like, he's like, you're banned. And, and they, the guy that was next to him or whatever, he's like, you're aware he's like the, like the biggest comedian in the world right now. Right. Yeah, and you want to ban yeah. him? And they're like, yeah. And they banned me. So he's like, I wasn't, I was never welcome back. Yeah. That was, up- um, fuck. What was his name? The late night guy. Right. I've heard that yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Carson. Right. Was that the Johnny Carson? Story? Was it him? Yeah. I think it might've been him. It was yeah. somebody like, like came up and because he had this like approved material mm-hmm. and then something happened right before we went on stage and he's like, all right, fuck these guys. And yeah, then yeah. <laughs> he came out, he goes, uh, Whatever the Muffet joke or whatever, I don't remember. But yeah. uh, but he was also like uncensored, like on like live television. So or maybe yeah. it was I, I think it was, it was MTV, or, technically, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever Which, it was. But the, yeah, they weren't happy about <clears throat> it. But he doesn't give a shit, dude. Yeah. Like what, that didn't really affect him at all. What's it gonna affect his know? career? He'll probably sell more tickets. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He he got so big. I wish I was around to like appreciate comedy like that, because you hear those stories. Like, I wish I was around to, like, see Sam Kinison, like, blow up on HBO specials and stuff. And yeah. I want to see, like, George Carlin live, but I, I never can because he's dead now, you know? Yeah. Like, he's, he's my favorite comedian, I think, of all time, George Carlin. Yeah. You know, so smart. Like, the whole, uh, the, best, the best joke ever is, like, it's a big club and you ain't in it. Talking about, yeah. like, politicians and shit. Corporations. About how there's, like, 300 people that own America. And yeah. they, they make you think you have freedom, but you don't, you know? Yup. Yeah. Oligarchs, baby. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're creaming pretty high right now. You want to uh, put a little uh, creamsicle on top of this creamy cream? Yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, Eric. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Sorry about the mom pussy joke. Hopefully that's new, not too heavy. It's just, you know, <laughs> these are just these are just jokes, pal. You know, it's... uh 
trying to just a couple boys trying to stay afloat on the old cream river that is life yep cream cream on man, man the sails eric and we'll sail into another week of happiness and creamy delights and we thank you creamers and we'll see you in a week <laughs>